Before the next episode of XJob Downloaded starts, I have a big favour to ask. If you've enjoyed any of our episodes so far, please can you click on the follow button on your platform. I'm on Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon and YouTube. It costs nothing to follow, but makes a real difference to me as a podcast producer. Thank you. This interview is being tape recorded. My name is Paul Maleri and this is XJob Downloaded. And today I'm interviewing Lucy Acred. Have I said it right this time? You have. (laughs) You've said it right this time. Thank you, Paul. (laughs) No worries. So Lucy is a leader within the Royal British Legion. And today this podcast is being released on the, the day that the RBL launched the 2023 Poppy Appeal. And it's really important that we get this message out to the listeners and to the people across the UK and beyond that the RBL needs your help. And there is a massive message here. But first of all, good morning, Lucy, and thank you for your time today. That's that's really lovely to be here, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me along. You're more than welcome. So, Lucy, what is your background? How did you get involved with the RBL and what is the RBL all about? Okay, well, um, the Royal British Legion, so my role within the Legion, I'm Poppy Appeal Manager for Cambridgeshire and Huntingdon. Um, So an area that I've lived in all my life, and I look after all the volunteers, help and support all the volunteers in Cambridgeshire and Huntingdon um, all year round. So I'm on the Poppy Appeal all year round, and it's a privilege to do the role that I do. I work with some amazing volunteers, yeah. And, and the Royal British Legion isn't just about November the 11th, is it? No, it's a, it it's a year-round um, event and there are things taking place right across the UK. Absolutely. Um, we encourage all year round fundraising. Uh, the Poppy Appeal is probably the best well known and most loved charitable appeal that goes on in the UK, um, which obviously kicks off uh, kicks off t- today yep. and um, runs until Remembrance Sunday, which is the 12th of November. So we our aim is to raise as much money as we can. Um, to help and support the armed forces community um, and that could be uh, donating for a poppy to show the armed forces that you care um, you know it's getting out there our volunteers distribute poppies and tins throughout the whole of their area and um, and it all goes to helping and supporting the armed forces community and helps us to continue the vital work that we that we do. And originally it was called the Earl Haig Fund. I'm doing this from memory, so... Yes, would you like me to do a quick one Yeah, please, if you could, I'd be very grateful. So um, initially it was inspired by the poem uh, In Flanders Fields, which was written by a Canadian doctor, uh, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae in 1915, um, after the loss of a friend of his... Um, he was moved by the sight of poppies that grew on the battlefields. Um, the countryside, which was once uh, beautiful landscapes, then barren and um, bleak by by war, really. Um, but the poppies that flourished um, on the landscape, and um, and that sort of inspired um, the poem that he wrote. Um, following on from that. Uh, American academic Moeen Michael adopted the poppy um, really in memory of those that had fallen during the war and she campaigned to get it adopted as an official item of remembrance so um, she worked alongside another lady a French lady who was also um, in the UK in 1921 when she planned to sell the poppies um, she met Earl Haig, who was the founder, which explains the Haig Fund, as it initially once was, and adopt, um, persuaded him to adopt the poppy as the emblem in the UK, which is what happened. So they ordered nine million poppies that year in 1921. Wow. And they sold them almost immediately. So originally they were made from silk. Uh, silk kind of poppies and they raised £106,000 
um, which was initially to help veterans with housing and jobs. Um, so that was absolutely a huge amount of money um, in 1921. Um, today, we have 40,000 volunteers and they help to distribute 40 million poppies. That's just a snapshot on how things have changed in that 102 years. Um, you know, still the same remembrance and the poppy go hand in hand. Um, our volunteers are so important to us. Um, they really are the heart of the appeal. Lots of our volunteers have been with us for many, many years, but we always encourage people to come forward, get involved with us, come and help with the campaign in the supermarkets, at the supermarket collections. Um, but there's also other ways in which you can get involved as well, distributing boxes to local businesses and shops, collecting them in, um, helping with the counting afterwards. There's so many things you can get involved with. Um, you, you might donate to the appeal. You might donate, say, five pounds. If you were donating an hour of your time, you might raise 20, 30, 40 pounds. Time is precious to everybody. It would be so important to us if, if you could come and help. Um, you know, we would welcome you with open arms. We really would. And it is, it is such a fantastic, I in fact, I've got it here. My Remembrance Sunday hymns, and I was there last year and privileged. I marched by the cenotaph, and it was just oh, very moving. Uh, oh, very moving. amazing, amazing! I just you could feel the the tension, and watching the king, and we were in the group just by the cenotaph, and watching the king lay the the first wreath, and it was it's just an amazing. Uh, organization and a, a amazing way to remember people and when you go into Westminster Abbey and you've got the tomb of the unknown soldier it is surrounded by poppies it's the most iconic grave in the United Kingdom if not in the world it was the first unknown soldier taken from four people four victims of the war one was chosen brought to the UK on HMS Verdun and buried with full honours at uh, Westminster Abbey and then, obviously, um, Her Majesty the Queen Mother, she laid her, paid her, her respects there, and, and, and it's just continued, that respect has carried on. As a child, I vividly remember my grandparents, who, obviously, they came from that generation where their fathers have fought in the First World War, my grandfathers have fought in the Second World War, and mm -hmm. the poppy appeal was one of the few... Um, military charities at that time you know in the, in the early early 70s it was one of the few military charities and it's as relevant to me today as it was back then yeah but it's maintaining that and how how do you now draw volunteers in from what areas what groups of people we welcome everybody absolutely everybody um Throughout Cambridgeshire, which is my area, I've, I've also recommended to um, local businesses if they'd like to get involved as part of their corporate social responsibility as well, because you can also talk about what you do when you're actually volunteering with us. Um, you know, lots of organisations like the cadets, um, they can then talk to the public about what they're doing and attract new members that way as well. Um, so really, um, if you want to get involved, um, it's a great way of meeting people as well. Um, for the youngsters, which are now... Um, looking for jobs or um, looking to go into further education and um, it's a great experience you get to talk to lots of people and the general public as well always like to come and share their stories a bit like yourself yep. um, about grandparents or members of the family that were involved um, in the war and things like that and that again is an as a a huge privilege as well so we do welcome everybody to come along and I always say bring a friend if you can so if you're doing an hour in the supermarket why not bring a friend with you as well and then you can have a catch up about things as well and get to talk and meet with other uh, people when you're out and about so yeah we welcome everybody and because the, the money we're not talking about 
first world. There are no first world war vic- veterans mm-hmm. anymore. We're still privileged to have a number of second world war and Normandy veterans and so on and so forth. But it's the modern conflicts. When That's I say mo- I just- it's the modern the, no, 1982, the Falkland Islands. You know, you've still got a huge amount of veterans from that. A lot of them need support for a number of different reasons. Absolutely. And illnesses such as PTSD or shell shock, once it, it was well known as, um, the effects of that often come out years later. So it might be five, six, seven years later down the line that the effects of that then come forward. Um, you know, the RBL originally was set up for, to help with employment and housing, but we've adapted and changed over that 102 years to, you know, because society has changed as well. And we offer a lot more than we did that was just housing and employment, you know, physical and mental well-being, um, financial and employment and support, all kinds of things um, that we can help with, you know, because society has changed as a whole as well. Yeah, absolutely. And this online, you think about it, our grandfathers, if we'd have told them about podcasts, <laughs> yeah, they'd have thought we yeah, were raving exactly. mad. But but, yeah. <laughs> the, but the fact is, this is our way of getting this to the public. Getting the message out. Yeah, definitely. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put your links into the body of the text. Yes. So that anybody that wants to take part in volunteering, wants to get involved with the Royal British Legion. Or even indeed, wants... if, if they need help as well. You know, if they need help and they want a number to call, I can tell you the number. It's 0808 802 8080. And the lines are open between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. seven days a week. So that's for anybody that needs any help from the Royal British Legion. Might just be some advice, um, you know, but our contact centre can help you, you know, well on your way. So that's absolutely fantastic. And that's for all members of the British forces. Yeah, British Armed Forces, yeah. Serving and ex-serving personnel and their families as well. We help their families. I, I think it's important to say that sometimes people just need a helping hand and we're here for the Armed Forces community and their families as well. So, Lucy, what do you personally need in Cambridgeshire and Huntingdon? What do you actually need by way of volunteers? Where are your biggest gaps? The biggest gaps for me are Central Cambridge. Uh, We have a collection at the Grand Arcade um, in the town, the shopping main shopping centre, as well as on the outskirts with the supermarkets. But the main um, area is the Grand Arcade shopping centre. And also in Peterborough, we have seven manned collections there. Um, we really struggle with volunteers in those areas. We cover Morrison's, Tesco's, Queensgate, the Town Hall, Asda, all of these locations, but we really struggle for volunteers. So if anybody would like to get in touch and can just do an hour in the supermarket at any of those locations locally, that would be absolutely amazing or help with the count afterwards. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, this is going to go on to my volunteers group. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you. Of, w- of which across the UK, we've got 7,000 members for mixed job wow. community volunteers. Okay. So hopefully somebody will pick up from this. And I know that your needs are replicated across the UK. Everybody needs volunteers. Everyone needs to get behind this and support this event. This and isn't... Really, show, really show the armed forces that they care as well. You Absolutely. know, get involved, meet new people, tell us about your organisation or your business, what you do, um, but be involved in probably the world's most loved and um, well-known charity. Identifiable. Organisation, yeah. So what Absolutely. I normally say in interviews is, have you got anything you'd like to add, alter or correct about today's interview? You're shaking your head. No, well, that's, a, that's a no then. <laughs> we will be in touch again. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. And if, if we can help you um, push out the message, do whatever we've got to do, then please let us know. But one thing before we go, on the 11th of November, there is a fundraising event at the Chelmsford City Racecourse. All the money is going to go to the Royal British Legion. We want to get as many people there as we can. You wear your medals, wear your uniforms, do whatever you want to do, support the event. 
let's get behind this. Let's make it the best year ever. And don't forget to donate for a poppy to show the armed forces that you care. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today. Right. Thank you. I will speak to you talking. again when you're older. Um, <laughs> let's keep in touch. And if there's anything that we can do for the Royal British Legion, we are here to help. Thank you. You're more than welcome. I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.